Welcome everybody to another episode of Books and Batches. Not to be confused with Books and Bitches. The musical episode is back, y'all. I'm, <laughs> I'm Kristen, and with me I have Erica and Maria. You didn't Ooh, sing I it. might have hit a note in there. I, I won't no, you sing didn't. it. I promise you didn't. I won't. Hit that note. Boom. <laughs> 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 we have a steel drum here. And it's not a steel it drum. is. He called it a steel drum. Fuck off. That's not a steel drum. I is literally it? asked Lou. Google it. A steel, steel drum. drum. Why are you saying fuck off for? Like, you know what a <laughs> steel also, drum is. Also, why did it trigger her so hard? Right? I, it literally is a steel drum. Wow, you must feel like an asshole. Steel tongue drum. You must feel real steel. dumb. Oh, st- why does it say steel pan? Because that's a pan. This is the drum. If you're watching us over on our YouTube page, just search up Books and Betches. Make sure you put a little apostrophe after N. I don't know if that's important. Do or I not. have that on that? No, I hope so. This week, we're actually not doing like a specific book, right? No, I'll touch upon a book, but it's uh, an author. I want to talk about an author. We're doing an author. We've never done this before. Yeah. We've never devoted an entire episode. I think I want to, I'm going to call, I call it the, the trifecta. Okay. Of this author. It's Elizabeth Acevedo. How do you spell her last name? A C E V E D O. Acevedo. Got Acevedo. it. Acevedo. Yes. Okay. Um, she is an Afro Latina. She's Dominican. Dominican. And you're Dominican. Yeah, that's why I'm I mean that's why I'm so I feel close to her. Does she live in America? Yeah, she's like uh born and born in New Yorker, I believe. Oh, nice. Uh she holds a BA in performing arts from George Washington University, an MFA in creative writing. So what makes her different? is that when i first read elizabeth Acevedo, i read the poet x and it's a book written in verse hmm. <laughs> i never thought i could like books written in verse what does that actually mean means it's listeners. written in poetry yep so the whole book the whole book the whole story of the book is told in a series of poems hmm. so okay i'm gonna say something about this i have i have a uh, above average iq okay i've, I've <laughs> here done we go a, again i've done iq <laughs> tests i have an above average iq i am not a dumb person by any stretch of the imagination not trying to like toot my own horn or anything like that i feel like somebody who is very unintelligent because i don't understand poetry i'm the same oh same i'm the exact i do same. not understand poetry when we read Shakespeare in, in, in like school, did not fucking get it. Yeah. I like couldn't cannot and I've read a lot of books. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like a dumb person. Like yeah. I said, I cannot read poetry. I took a poetry class and the poems that I wrote that I were like, Ooh, this is good. It has double so meanings. Bad. I'm like so, bad. so deep. And he yeah, they were like, This is horrible. And then I wrote one poem where I literally just like talked about all the sounds that I heard in that moment and I was like, The cat meowed or something. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like this is one of the best poems that uh we've uh, that i've read and can you read this out loud for like a seriously a dead ass i, I, I don't get it i don't get I it love dead so. ass. no say it i, I love am, dead ass i'm interested in this because yeah i want to play I'm an excerpt dumb. at least maybe one or two from yeah. the poet x because again like what i also love about elizabeth Acevedo is because she reads she narrates her audiobooks that's cool so i love that because it's it's the poetry coming from the author mm-hmm. the way it was intended. But there's a story. Super cool. There's a story in. Yes. Yeah, so let me, let me like give you a rhyming? 60 sec. Yeah. It, it, it's not even like it's slam poetry. Okay. And it's not like. It doesn't generic. get old. Like. No. Like you have to wait till you listen to it. Because after it's like not, the third one. It's not generic in the way that's like. Not to be a bitch right now, but it's not a Gabby Hanna thing. <laughs> that's what I was been thinking about this Hanna. whole. Oh, God, God. do we even bring up no, Gabby no. Hanna? Gabby, Gabby Hanna whole is a YouTuber Hanna. and she's written books and she does music. And I'm not going to bash her here. That's not my part. That's not my place. Yeah, she have like a famous thing that she did. She's the monster meme. Not if I'm a monster. <laughs> no, she's like, that sucks, TikTok everywhere. Yeah. She's like the worst person on the internet right now i don't even care like if somehow she found this podcast i don't want to be rude we would be i don't don't give a shit about her but um (laughs) has she done a poem that i would know no No. okay she wrote a poetry book and she gets pissed when people criticize it okay okay she gets real mad but what i'm saying you know it's not like like a gabby hannah pretentious Um, poem okay or orion 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 who the fuck is that? Who's Orion? She's like, like a the f- stars? Yeah, she was famous on TikTok. And, um, oh, I wouldn't know. know. Not TikTok. Fucking what was the one before? Musically? Musically? No, the one before. Vine. That. Vine. She's a Vine, <laughs> she was a Vine well, star. Well, Gabby was a Vine star. Okay, Gabby okay. Maybe star it's like first. the same like vibe. Yeah. But yeah, she like has a book out and I like, she, I've read her poems and I'm like, this is very, very nice. I don't get it. 
<laughs> That's the thing. And so, Gabby's, nice. you would understand. It's just like so. Twitter I memes. I can't okay. do Sick. I can't do poetry that is um, one off. That's trying to be super deep and give you an underlying. Yeah. yeah, I guess pretentious is the word. Yeah. In the in the case of Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, it's a story that's cool. about a young girl mm-hmm. who likes poetry, and it's her journey to start slam poetry. But it's also her life. How and it's long told. is the book? It's super short. Um, well, the I audio, the audio book is like three hours. I imagine it'd have to be pretty short. Three hundred and sixty-eight pages, but again, oh, it's huh. short. It's 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 That's still poetry. longer than the fucking hike, right? But the pages are true, not true. like full. True. It's paragraphs. A, that's a six five ninety nine is a lot a lot of money you charge for a book that's fucking a bunch of poems. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the Elizabeth Bass made of Yeah, a Kindle. Oh. Kindle is six dollars for it. Yeah, it's just, an award-winning book. It is. Like several. I'm awards. assuming there's a reason. I'm sure. It's a badass, but I love it. All right, I, can you read us? I just am not great with money. <laughs> in terms of books, I'll like if it's you, like two ninety nine, that's like my max. I'll my give max you the bid. sixty seconds of this book, and but I'm I'm gonna discuss three of them. She's written three books. Yeah. That I've read. Are they all poetry? Form? No. One of them is not. Two of them are. Okay. Okay. Was not. So let me just say it. The Poet X is the first one I ever read. Second is um, With the Fire on High. That's mm-hmm. a regular YA Are they in the same story. universe? No. Okay. It's all different. They're okay. just three books by this author that I really love. Okay. The third one is Clap When You Land. If you don't know, <laughs> when you're on a plane and when you land as this. a Latino, you have to, you, you clap. You thank the Lord on high that you <laughs> landed safely. Is that what it is? Yeah. It's like you, you are grateful and happy to have landed safely I love that. from flying because we humans are flying up in the big like <laughs> metal tube that's defying gravity that's magic <laughs> so you when you you when you land you clap and it's a funny story when you I, do it well, no as a young kid yeah when we I used to go you to, didn't know any better i used to go to dr all the time the whole plane's full of dominicans coming to new york <laughs> so we are clapping i thought it was normal <laughs> Fast forward to when I'm, I went to, to school in Florida for college. Oh. I come, I come back for, um, uh, a, a, a week, a week to come home <laughs> and I kid you not, I landed <laughs> and I said, <laughs> <laughs> and I never, I never turned so fast to the window like, oh shit, I just no, this is the wrong crowd, wrong crowd. <laughs> Oh then, boy! You would think coming from Florida, like from from Miami. Uh, yeah, you would think. You would think. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was. I no, don't know. I don't know. I think full sale, isn't it? Orlando. Oh, Orlando. That's right. that's what, yeah. But still, but a lot of Miami. Latinos live in Florida. Yeah, exactly. you know, it's full of Cubans. Yeah. So, I don't know if my plane <laughs> just wasn't because they were going to it Connecticut. It was just filled with all the white people. Yeah. It was coming yeah. to the white people coming back to Connecticut. So I, but like white people, clap too. No. No. No, it's You've not a ever thing. Seen I don't somebody know. Clap. I, don't, I, I guess thing. I never looked at the nationality of the person clapping. You I never heard to. anybody clap because only life. Latinos. Yeah. And so <laughs> the thing, so ever, and you know, back when we were at WWE, I traveled a lot for yeah. them, right? I will so always down. remember. When I land, I think about that time I fucking clapped. <laughs> and you're like, and I'm you traumatized go to, by you it. You go to clap. I go to do like, it. It's like an, a muscle instinct that I go to do it again. And and I'm you like, no. PTSD and you're like, but, okay, especially yeah. on a red eye flight. Bet. Imagine it's 5 a.m. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I bet your mom and dad still do it. They haven't no been on a plane what. in a while. But if they went on right now to like somewhere in America. I wish. America, I kind of want us all to go on a plane just to do I it. I want to go to DR. Do you ever like... um like join in on a joke but you actually don't think it's funny like that's the the clapping when you <laughs> land joke like i everyone makes fun of people who clap when they land and like it literally does not matter to me in no, any capacity I think it's adorable i like it, I, i've never thought any ill will towards it until mm. people started making fun of it and then i was like oh i guess it's funny but like it's not i'm never awake to clap when i'm so then i'm Xanax like out. so everyone makes fun of it and it's like a it's like a so not like here's, badly here's, but it's like a joke and yeah. i'm like it's, I didn't know we did it's that. Funny. I think it's funny. It's a hilarious. little weird, right? So here's where I'm gonna just jump to that to the the plot of Clap When You Land, so you can feel bad about it now. Oh no! Um, <laughs> it's probably it's, gonna like rip our hearts. Yeah. It's two young girls. One lives in DR. One lives in New York. They oh share. God, a, it's us. Just kidding. They share a father. <laughs> they share a father, it's but us. they do not know. <laughs> okay. And they only find out when his flight drops and crashes. This How is they why find I don't that fly. Out. They never got to clap when they landed because they never landed. They died. The whole flight. <laughs> I'm saying it like, <laughs> like it's my fault. Yeah. We can't. They died. They died. They fucking died. died. Imagine you're, they're like on their way down. They're like, let's. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so these girls she find out about each other's mom. existence yeah through the death of their father okay because he had two families basically two lives oh so he like was doing them dirty not yeah basically oh. he had a family he had a family okay, in okay, dr okay. And he had a family i feel like i've heard States. of this book Sometimes i don't know if you've told me about it or i might have mentioned it do you ever wonder if your dad does that i would kill him he's listening I would kill him. I, I would tell him to his face. I, I would see him being a little him. player. Just, the amount he, of like stress that would be to hold two families. I know. Like you have to be. A yeah. Sick so he lived. He lived individual. mostly. He was yeah. a good person, right? Yeah. He wasn't like a bad person, but That's he had a say. he had a child, and he sort of dated two friends around the same time, and then they both ended up being pregnant. That's where you're gonna fuck up. But he took care of her. Mm. So I think it's Cari, Camino, Camino, and Yahaira. Yahaira is the one that lives in New York. Camino is the one that lives in. Um, dr when jahada jahada finds out about camino she like reaches out to her and mm-hmm. try to be like hey like you're my sister this is and it's it's a talks daddy's about, dead it talks <laughs> and, 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 and these girls go through clap. their own grief <laughs> god i can't with you two <laughs> daddy daddy didn't clap <laughs> Maria goes, you guys are about to feel really bad we're over here like daddy's dead bashing it anyway <laughs> <laughs> i want to i want to take to celebrate an amazing author that i love and you're just gonna fucking make it worse this is what this podcast is derailed we can't have other. nice things we can't have nice things sorry elizabeth <laughs> listen I, elizabeth i love you so forget I mean, these two wait, i love you no you've we're already here mentioned for three books for that i'm already very into well i haven't mentioned the second book to you but i'm putting two, i'm two putting them. clap when you land on my uh, the, that one's in verse no i want to also the, in verse i want to read the oh they're oh, no, both I want the ones. if you would have let me get to it there's wait. one there's one that's not in verse no but i'm like what? really into you know i'm like super you are into rap so you I'm should like very this. very into hip-hop a lot of people are very confused when they find out i'm a hip-hop i head, love it and i it's like know about everything you. about like old school hip-hop i love well, you're, you're like, like legit I love battle rap everything about hip i the reason is because i love poetry i love i love meaning and lyrics i don't like like the mumble rap like the fucking new age uh, i'm just not into it and and i have nothing against it but i just really like lyrics mm. so i already know the second you said th- that it was like it was in verse i was like oh i'm fucking in i'm, I'm so reading this 100%. It, it's good i, I especially if it's impactful which it sounds like it is it is it is they so what's the story their grief. oh the first one is a girl trying to learn poetry the girl the first one's about a girl who has a very overbearing mm. mother who's very religious and yeah. sort of like navigating Ooh. that see i would i think i would be really into that it's one. very uh, the, the first one makes me cry i was listening to it again on the way here and i cried again i want to read it's so freaking that. good I'll read that. the second one it's not written in verse it's called um with the fire on high yeah it's about a young teen who's became a mom at like 15 right mm. so she has a she's in high school and all she wants to do is cook like she loves is to she cook. latina yeah these are all latinas oh that's cool it's all latina characters do you feel like that's a stereotype too though like amongst yeah it's a, no, well it's not a stereotype it's what you see often yeah is young latina girls are pregnant early in life mm. because of circumstances circumstances yeah. and Systemat- it's systematic uh, oppression that's yeah. what it is if you if yeah. you don't give these opportunities if you don't give people the opportunities to grow and leave the environment that makes this the stereotype that they, they will, they will it? always continue you yeah. can't you can't expect people to be able to figure out how to pull themselves out of poverty exactly at the end of yeah. the day like we need to be able to provide and doesn't matter where you fall on the spectrum whether you're republican or democrat we need to be able to provide the less fortunate with opportunities to improve their life exactly at the end of the day whether that's fucking government funding whatever Mm -hmm. the fuck it is i don't know how we can't all i don't know i don't know what it is and i don't know the right answer but if you Mm -hmm. can't agree that it's un there's an unfair advantage right now then you are part of the problem exactly Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. snaps Mm -hmm. let's get it let's get (laughs) it let's get it she has a young daughter and she loves to cook she learned cooking from her grandmother grandmother's one that raised her her father uh went to abuela Yes, he calls her abuela. Nice. Uh, also, another thing about her books that I love is that she doesn't. You know how sometimes when you have a different language in a book, they cater to the white. Yes. And they add the like so the little dis- yes. the the definitions in there for you randomly. Elizabeth does that sometimes, but not all the time. I love that. She'll just I put don't the like Spanish it. word in there. The only That's thing great. I don't like is when it's like a full like we're in like conversation mm-hmm. and the, and it's entirely in Spanish or entirely if in German. If it's a full yeah. sentence and, and yeah, I'm no. like I don't know what the <laughs> fuck is happening here and y'all are lucky that I'm reading this on Kindle so because I can, I can <laughs> translate it. But, but see, if it was I be pissed. That's the thing. You would think that as a reader you just have the know it all be like let me just google it real quick. It takes you 5 minutes. Yeah. 
That's true. But it like if or it, one word, yes. Multiple like having if it's to a type full, out I sentences. I think full sentences would be tough. I think in that case, I would prefer someone in the next sentence to give me the context. Yeah. The you know? context. I don't even I don't need, need definition. I don't even need, don't even need give the me full a context. translation. Yeah. 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 Just give, give me like, context. Give me the person thinking about what they're going to say next. Yeah. And like I can uh, context clues piece it together. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Have you exactly. ever read an entire book in Spanish? No, not all the way. Mm. I've read a couple pages. Like I, I can read in Spanish. That's what I was wondering. Um, well, I know you I speak don't prefer Spanish every day, but it. Yeah, but that's it's not the same. Yeah, it ain't the same to read it and really, and it ain't the same to read it and write it either. Like writing it is also that's struggling. I, I struggle with the accents. Yeah, on letters and shit. Mm-hmm. But I can read it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I pro- process it as easy as I do English. Yeah, so I read English first. I can read Spanish second. Really, um, interesting. That is yeah. interesting. But your first language is Spanish. I would say my first language is English. I was raised oh. here. I thought you were. I thought you were raised in Spanish. I was raised in Spanish with my family, but like yeah, you still but, only so speak. That's your first but, language. But but yeah. legit, I guess yeah, because you only speak Spanish to your mom. Still, I speak her in English too. Very. Rarely. I I, de- Very rarely. I define my first language as the first language I was taught to speak. Yeah. Then Spanish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I just keep thinking because like you your were preferred, raised here. Your preferred Absolutely. language is English. My preferred yeah. language is English. I'm I. This, I butcher Spanish so bad because I have this thing where I think faster than I speak. Yeah, and so my 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 mouth doesn't like to form words correctly. <laughs> and now I have I'm on a podcast, and that's that's been the world of You've my been life. You're crushing it. Uh-huh. So uh, anyway, back to this. She's a young mom. She loves to cook. Her grandma's the one that raised her. Her father is Puerto Rican, so he's like lives in Puerto Rico. He doesn't want to leave Puerto Rico, mm. but he comes every summer, kind of thing. And so through school, there's like this trip to go to Italy. Mm-hmm and be able to learn cooking thing through this cooking class and she wants to go That's but fun. she's like a young mom with no money and it's like oh yeah doing that so it's it's her navigating through that um part of her life and trying to still be a young person that's growing and learning and becoming a full-fledged human and also raising one yeah i kind of love this because like it almost highlights on something that i don't know you don't want to listen to adults be like you don't want to have a kid at 16 like you like if that accidentally happens and maybe you're like I want to have this kid or whatever it is like, but having like a book like this and, and showing a young adult the troubles that you can run into mm-hmm, right. of being a young parent. Yeah. It might, I don't want to say it deter it, but like it might give them the full spectrum of what the it's, consequences of their decisions it's, are. And that's something also with the other, with Poet X is that it touches on subjects that at least Latino kids mm-hmm. are more like feared into than taught Taught. to yeah damn and so and it's kind of opening that conversation and letting them conversation see it without having to put the fear of god in them Mm. yeah because that's a lot because kids at the end at the end of the day like you don't as a child you don't want to be like forced into something no right you You don't want to be able to make your own feared into something because then that's when you rebel and you make it worse so if you have full or it fucks you up later yeah especially if you're feared adult conversations about these troubling topics the right way and still show that she can still have a life and still learn from her mistakes and she navigates dating someone new as a youngster but was still with a kid like it just the whole dynamic is weird but she also it's like she doesn't want to be used again like she was when she first got pregnant and this kid's like nah i just i like you it's just yeah just chill <laughs> I love that. it's i love the, the, the relationship with the grandmother as well like i'm close to my grandparents mm-hmm. and so it's it's like it's such a it's such a great book and it's not in verse. Nice. So that's a regular, full-fledged, normal, con- the contemporary story. Do you think it's weird? Not weird, but do you think it's interesting that she wrote about uh, Puerto Rican when she's Dominican? Because I know there's some animosity. I think she's there. both. I think she might oh, be. Okay. I, I, she might be both. But again, I feel like I know there's this age-old fight <laughs> between Dominicans <laughs> and Puerto Ricans. I don't know when it happened. I don't know who decided it. But ever since I was growing up, all the Puerto Rican kids had to bully me because I'm a Dominican. But there is some custom so like weird. change. But, but there are some things that are different. But there are a lot of similarities. Okay. Like I don't see much of a difference between me and Puerto Ricans except for the accent we have. So like I kind of related to the like Italians and, and Portuguese people because hmm. it's like very it's the same like you got big families, you're loud, you're obnoxious. Yep. Like it's that same vibe of like when you're a uh, Portuguese American versus Italian American, they're mm. basically cousins, like essentially. Mm. But there's like 
they're separated somehow, but they're very, they're very. That's much how the same. it is with Dominican and Puerto Ricans. Yeah, and I think we're just separated because someone decided to think that elitist is the part of Latino things. Like, oh, Puerto Ricans are better than Dominicans, <laughs> and it's it's bad. Like yeah. when I was a kid, I had only Puerto Rican friends. It's really. Crazy. Uh, in in Catholic school, and it went to the point where I used to say like, "Well, no, I'm part Puerto Rican too." My dad was was raised in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I'm part mm. Puerto Rican. Is that true? Yeah, he was, he, my dad lived like five. I think he, my aunt, his sister was born in Puerto Rico. Okay, if I'm right, I could be wrong. Mm. But they were raised in Puerto Rico for a couple of years because my grandfather's a judge, and he it was Puerto Rico for some reason. Didn't your parents meet in America? But they were no. My parents are from Dominican Republic. They were they, born they and met raised there. In, no, they met they in met, DR. Oh, they did meet. Yeah. DR. Oh. Met so DR. I have a really cool that that is very interesting. But I have a very cool like factoid about Puerto Rico. So Puerto <laughs> Rico, it was actually. <laughs> Na- like think about all the islands surrounding Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. They're all like sand, not good with gener- sand, yeah, sand this, sand that. Like it's mm-hmm. all Saint, you know, Saint whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. What's the biggest city in Puerto Rico? San Juan. That's yeah. a, that's the. I think so. They uh, it was a um, logistics thing on a map that got switched. No Because way. think of what Puerto Rico is. Port, the rich port, right? Yeah. Puerto Rico, yeah. And what is San Juan? Saint, like wherever. San Juan. So it. Like it makes uh, more sense that San Juan would be the, the rich port because yeah. that's the original port that, like, you know, that uh-huh, had all the uh-huh. had all the imports and everything, and it would make more sense for the island to be called San Juan. Wow, because huh. all the surrounding islands are that. I so didn't know it was that. actually yeah. a logistical error on a on a map. Someone fucked so, up. Like some on a ledger, somebody fucked up, Imagine and they switched like it. That. <laughs> and now what Puerto Rico, ass fuck up. Puerto Rico is. Rich port and their, you know, main city is San Juan. There's also San Juan in, in, wow. in Dominican Republic, I think. I believe. There's so a San Juan in Dominican that's a Republic. that's a fun little Puerto Rican uh, back to it. <laughs> Thanks I got so much, it. Erica. <laughs> Bringing you all the good stuff. <laughs> that's a real that's why party people come trick. here. They come here for the facts and the facts for only. the facts. Oh my! I, <laughs> <laughs> when I tell you, I just had a freaking. Zena just jumped up on me, and I genuinely just had a heart check. She released a poem a couple years ago uh, that is resonating really heavily right now with COVID and stuff. And mm-hmm. I even like sent it to my my manager and my boss and stuff. And I was like, I think you guys resonate with this because you really like people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I would I think I, I would play it for everybody, but I, it's like two minutes long. And I don't want to yeah. take us too long. I want to do an excerpt from from poetics, but her poetry, just the way she describes things the way she gives like the, the sh- her sentence structures and the storytelling within the story it's so nice i love that and that's why I, super it's, cool it, it threw me for a loop because i thought i was like i can't do nothing in verse i feel mm. like i'm fangirling this lady and i don't even know her. And <laughs> i haven't read her so i haven't hard. read anything that I she's fangirl- written and, and that's I'm all already i want <laughs> that's all i want yeah. i just want everyone to love this woman and the work she puts out yeah. says so, yeah, it's important elizabeth if you're listening we're probably going to tweet this at you and <laughs> we love you already we haven't even read your stuff but ignore we're obsessed what with they did about clap when you well, land well, <laughs> oh, yeah. we were just joking about that <laughs> and I was totally just joking about the price of the book because that's also we're just a funny I mean, podcast. We're just coin. here to like take mi- my coin, Elizabeth. Yeah, I don't okay. care. I totally am so probably let me, gonna find let me it on see Scribe. If I can give us a little bit of an excerpt on and also another thing. This is another example of why narrators matter so much in yeah. in audiobooks. And then and it could really shape the way you ingest a story. Yeah. You have a shitty narrator, you're done. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's why I didn't like Serpent and Dove because the narration was trash. Right. That's unfortunate. That's it's really so unfortunate. So yeah, I've yeah. decided to narrate my own book. So you really, really do a good really job. Really assuming that I'm gonna fuck it up. Well, your mm-hmm. your audition for Release of Breath, I didn't know I was holding yeah. was perfection. Yeah. So I think honestly, great. it adds a very interesting variable to this entire experiment. When you read a book, you know it yeah bringing an outside source that can make or break a book that an author wrote i mean that's huge there's mm-hmm. already so many things to not like a book like I, I talk about this all the time with um with the creative process and like being judged on your creativity and like your actual book when you do a video you're judged on the the singular video mm-hmm. right when you do a movie you're judged on the overall movie when you're judged on a book yeah it's 
600 or 500 or 400 pages of judgment yeah Yeah. it's so much Mm -hmm. like every sentence every word it changes your opinion Mm -hmm. every chapter is changing your opinion on whether you like this or not it's so much more to judge people on and then you throw in an outside element and then you throw in character narration it's a whole yeah especially if you have if you have uh like narrators who are just over the top and too Mm acty like there's a difference between sounding like a genuine human that's actually experiencing the story and sounding like a theater kid that's overdoing it right that's what i come across a lot of times is the theater kids that are overdoing it but you get that rare gem of good audiobooks that just sound so much better spoken than read on paper so for for elizabeth acevedo's books like i love listening to her it's cool that she does it she's i love that i love that shonda rhimes did it Me too, too. Yeah, it's yeah. like so it's, cool she's like my shonda rhymes in books yeah and i can't <laughs> wait for her to like release something else yeah so okay has I'm anything gonna, has anything gotten made into clap when you land it's gonna become a, a show or a movie yes and i'm i'm really excited for that perfect daddy and, you did <laughs> <laughs> and the re- so the reason why this this um the the plane crash for clap when you land um wasn't as like heavily publicized it was a real flight that fell Jeez. but it happened soon after 9-11 i don't fuck around so with no one oh. no one really oh. was worried mm-hmm. about it it oh. was oh. like 9-11 oh. was the one that was mattering and so that's why this and it also was a plane of dominicans so okay let me let me start this siomara is she's a, a curvaceous beautiful young girl she's like 15 16 mm-hmm. maybe almost 17 and as you know young, women, adult? young adult okay so as women we know that men are trash and Facts. they are no offense they are always Michael. you know at least the bad ones are constantly objectifying women's bodies mm-hmm. especially the younger you start young the minute you get to puberty you're already objectified so siomara deals with this a lot where because she's curvy men decide that they can cut call her and and it's always her fault it's never like the men's fault of course so this she's part existing. is after she's been cat called or something and i just i resonated so much with this this imagery and the, how she details this topic and how siomara's feeling so it happens when i'm at bodegas it happens when i'm at school it happens when i'm on the train it happens when i'm standing on the platform it happens when i'm sitting on the stoop it happens when i'm turning the corner it happens when i forget to be on guard it happens all the time i should be used to it i shouldn't get so angry when boys and sometimes grown-ass men talk to me however they want, think they can grab themselves or rub against me or make all kinds of offers. But I'm never used to it, and it always makes my hands shake, always makes my throat tight. The only thing that calms me down after Twin and I get home is to put my headphones on, to listen to Drake, to grab my notebook and write and write and write all the things I wish I could have said, make poems from the sharp feelings inside that feel like they could carve me wide open. It happens when I wear shorts, It happens when I wear jeans. It happens when I stare at the ground. It happens when I stare ahead. It happens when I'm walking. It happens when I'm sitting. It happens when I'm on my phone. It simply never stops. I think I would like listening to poetry more than reading it. Really? Like, I think I would enjoy listening to that more than reading it. Oh, I think I would. Too. It would be more impactful for me. It is for me. For me, it is. I think reading it, I I can't put the voice behind it. I love like I don't know if you've seen like some of the um, poetry like uh, videos where they're like in a competition and they're like reading Years poetry ago, and yeah. stuff yeah. or poetry's poems. Um, <laughs> I feel like that resonates with me more. Yeah, I think so too. I think the feeling behind the voice is what gets me more into it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, slam poetry especially is something that you have to you have to act you it. have to hear and you have to like. I mean, most of the emotion is coming from how the person is saying it yeah 100 percent. like this is definitely a different type of poetry mm-hmm. than like it's not the your fucking gabby hannah's and shit yeah like those are th- i agree like this is this is poetry i would want to hear mm-hmm. and there's and since it's her own words there's a lot more emotion that's coming out of it that i think is amazing yeah i think it's awesome so yeah Super it, cool. it's just a I'm lot of moments it. with her especially the moments with with siomara and her mother and how she t- she uh intertwines the faith aspect yeah and now her mother's very uh catholic very christian very religious and how siomara sort of battles against that and the wordplay that she does within it is just phenomenal i, like, love, I love i love all of these books so if I'm if so you are into it. ya if you like poetry if you're cool with maybe dabbling 
dipping your toes in i highly recommend through audio for poet x and clap when you land Mm -hmm. i think like especially with like specific authors like sometimes there's just certain things that they do really well yes and like yes. sometimes it's descriptions or like making you feel like you're there sometimes it's the action sometimes yep. it's the dialogue sometimes it's the romance like whatever it is i feel like some authors are just so good at like putting you there yeah like in the room i agree smelling the like the coffee being yep. made like you're just she's, fucking there she's really good at like getting that raw emotion out yes i was gonna say this the feels emotion very emotional that yeah. she puts through her words yeah is you're the, you're her. like in you that character you like i feel I, it when she i mean uh, granted she was talking about something that i think all three of us can re- like can relate to mm-hmm. but like i felt her yeah. yeah in me like i was like yeah yeah, yeah. Say it, girl. i love that she's a bad bitch That's awesome. and it's her mm-hmm. and it's her twin right so she she's a, a her twin brother is the complete opposite of her mm. he's very he doesn't like confrontation he's very meek he's like he likes anime like he's not no. your stereotypical little dominican kid Love and that. he ends up Thank also you. being gay mm. and so in the middle of xiomara sort of meeting a boy and learning how to like like someone and then the issues of well our mom was not gonna like that our mom says we can't date like that's not a thing right. we can do right they're both realizing it's like well xiomara has uh the guy she likes ahmad and then um xavier is a is a white boy that she likes or he likes and uh they're both like we're screwed like wow and xavier's trying to be like let's just wait let's just try to get out of here let's just try to get free and so i was like why do we have to just wait why can't i just fight back now like let me just do my slam poetry let me just be who i am why must i be like oppressed by my own family dude i love this i think it's this is so amazing dope. i'm gonna re- i want to read these. it raises and a they're lot so of, fast they're yeah. fast books it raises a lot of like problems and questions and especially and we talk about this a lot like with young impressionable people like it's yeah. just you know when you're starting to read some of these books like this is the type of stuff i wish i would have had this book versus like reading Aww. after and, sure. and again it, this gives you an, ex- an, an experience of what latino kids have in their home yeah like when i read about this mother i saw my mom oh <laughs> but my not as extreme as my mom like my mom is not that extreme like oh, this okay. woman's like full extreme yeah but i see my mom in her it's and the nice. same in the same things yeah. that are are perpetuated in the latino culture that like like for like ugh, this is so specific but like tampons mm-hmm. siomara gets her, her period at 11 i got my period at 11 so i was like fuck girl it's early we, early and so she does no one taught her what to do yeah when it happened so she just so no matter went got tampons and just made it work but didn't put the tampon in correctly because again doesn't know no one told right. her i didn't put my tampon in correctly <laughs> until i was like 18 either way right so Mara had no idea gets home sort of like explains to her mom what's going on her mom's like what are you doing using tampons mm. good young girls don't use tampons are you are you having sex wow and that's something my mother is said to me really <laughs> no offense if my dad's listening it's <laughs> whatever um that's something that's my mom's does it. i i took one of her tampons once and yeah. she blew up on me she's like that, are you having sex wow and i'm just like how how it's does just, that I don't, jump to that <laughs> i actually don't do pads or tampons anymore i buy the underwear i want to get you? that i want to do that too. fucking great really how, okay i want to do that this you cut this out if you we want. should do a period podcast how, how, <laughs> yeah how do you wash them what do you do for you washing wash it regular do you put them separately from your regular clothes no <laughs> i mean i do underwear no i want to keep it like, i do my underwear separately oh they're expensive but invest in them i like, want you them just like get like five pairs and you wear them straight for five days and then you're good yeah that's dope okay well um, i'm sorry that this turned to that but, no i but just yeah. i love i like that we did this because we've never done the whole like one author thing yeah i like this i know i didn't I go think too could, deep i think we could do into, more author yeah profiles. i think like yeah i you just, didn't go too deep into her necessarily but like right. i like that we talked about her work yeah and we were i would love to go more deep but i want to do yeah. more research but she's yeah. again like it's just one of those things where i'm not good at um following specific people yeah like i like uh, like actors and stuff like i'll never watch an actor's um interview right because i'm not really? that kind of yeah i don't care I'm same i don't same. care yeah, i just same. i just live my life yeah but for her like whatever her name is attached to i will read yeah. i'm like that for certain actors like uh a leo dicaprio um i don't even know like a george clooney or something like that like i will watch every fucking thing they make every single that? thing they make i used to be gerard butler for me so like there i think there are certain people that i like fangirl like really hard and there are certain now that I'm in the book world. Now there are certain authors where I will read every single thing that's that they write. 
well, think Elizabeth's I, the only one for mine. Oh gosh, dog. <laughs> um, I I'm I think that we should open this up then and just say like if there are anybody that want to like request an author that we oh, should like yeah that we should like if dive you have like into. a favorite author maybe we yeah, can do like if they have cool. more than one like more than three books we can each read one of that one author could be <gasps> neat. all right so send us your favorite authors that have like multiple books that you think we'd be into and we'll each read one, one of, of those books. i love that that's cool give us your favorite authors i would love it to be a person of color personally just because i would like to expand mm, my reading agreed so if it's a person of color i think that that's extra bounty points bonus points yeah um i would prefer a fantasy author though yeah 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 give me give me some fantasy. oh yeah I, well, no you know let's not be picky just send me some. i want fantasy <laughs> not romance i but yeah if yeah. you are looking for a new author and you like i will you like ya and you like hard-hitting contemporaries and uh amazing storytelling from people of color of a different you know normal the no- different background that's somebody else's normal that's yeah. not your normal mm-hmm dive into Lizzie, that's oh, i love that um follow us i'll go to our instagram this is where you can do all this stuff oh <laughs> at, yeah at books underscore n underscore betches b-e-t-c-h-e-s and follow us there and yeah that's that and the tubes you can watch on those youtube oh watch us, watch on, us YouTube. on the tube and so I, you I can see me do this. this oh where's the other one you stole it oh watch us on youtube so you can see me do this everybody books. have a great ready everybody books have a great and rest and of your day I hope and i'm trying to do something here i'm trying to hold on Everybody have a nice day. Enjoy the ride. Yes. You're ruining it. Books and that betches. was nice. Thank Books you. and betches. Bye. <laughs>